Good morning everyone this uh, lovely April morning. Last week we celebrated the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. <coughs> Excuse me. And now we're going to think about life after Jesus. What did the disciples do after that? And all the people, all his followers. This is part one of a two-part message. So uh, let's... Uh, uh, read together in the book of Acts if you'll join me just to reflect on life after Jesus. Let's hear the word of God as uh, we find it in Acts chapter 2 verse 22 and Peter is speaking. Let's hear the word of God. Listen to these words fellow Israelites. So, G so Peter's speaking to the Israelites, to the, the Jews. Jesus of Nazareth was a man whose divine authority was clearly proven to you by all the miracles and wonders which God performed through him. You yourselves know this, for it happened here among you. And uh, the crowd would have been nodding because they would remember the miracles that happened among them. The Sermon on the Mount, the loaves and the fishes, letting down the man to be healed through the roof. And um, all the other things, the centurion's daughter raised uh, and, and healed and uh, Lazarus raised from death. They would have remembered all these things that Jesus, because these were the same crowd, people that saw and witnessed the miracles. You yourselves know this. Peter says, for it happened here among you. So this is real. This is real for them all. And it's real for us as well because we could have been among them had we lived then. In accordance with his own plan, God had already decided that Jesus would be handed over to you. To you. He points at the Jews. And you killed him by letting sinful men crucify him. Remember, Pilate wanted to let him go. But God raised him from death, setting him free from its power because it was impossible that death should hold him prisoner. For David said about him, now Peter's quoting the Psalms, I saw the Lord before me at all times. He is near me and I will not be troubled. Now any Christian can say that. He is near me and I will not be troubled. And so I'm filled with gladness and my words are full of joy. And I, mortal though I am, will rest assured in hope because you will not abandon me in the world of the dead. You'll not allow your faithful servant to rot in the grave. Now David believed this. Jesus demonstrated this. And we will inherit this. We will not be allowed to... Uh, be to rot in the grave. You've shown me that the paths that lead to you've shown me the paths that lead to life, and your presence will fill me with joy. And when we come to church, we're filled with joy as we read about these things, and as we learn more and more about the paths that lead to life. So keep meeting together, keep reading God's word, and keep on listening to an explanation, good explanations of the scriptures. Join me for part two, just in a moment. This is part two of the one week after Easter, thoughts from the book of Acts. We're reading in Acts chapter 22 and verse 32, Peter continuing to speak to the crowd. And he says to them, let's hear the word of God, he says, God has raised this very Jesus from death and we are all witnesses to this fact. He has been raised to the right hand side of God his Father and has received from him the Holy Spirit as he promised. What you now see and hear is his gift that he has poured out on us. For it was not David who went up into heaven. Rather, he said, the Lord said to my Lord, sit here at my right hand until I make your enemies as a footstool under your feet. And the reason he's saying this is so that the crowd aren't getting mixed up. This isn't about David. Yes, God made promises to David. 
and he promised through his line the Messiah, the Saviour of the world. And, P and Peter's making it absolutely clear it's Jesus, not David, that's sitting at the right hand of the Father. All the people of Israel then are to know for sure that this Jesus, whom you crucified, is the one that God has made Lord and Messiah. When the people heard this, they were deeply troubled and said to Peter and the other apostles, what shall we do, brothers? Because they knew they were part of Jesus being crucified. They had a hand in that. Peter said to them, Each one of you must turn away from his sins and be baptised in the name of Jesus Christ so that your sins will be forgiven and you'll receive God's gift, the Holy Spirit. And uh, for God's promise was made to you, to you Jews, to you people of Israel that is, and to your children and to all who are far away that's us we're far away we we don't live in israel all whom the lord our god calls to himself peter made his appeal to them and with many other words he urged them saying save yourselves from the punishment coming on this wicked people and many of them then believed his message and were baptized and about 3,000 people were added to the group that day. So we see how Peter used some leverage to make the people of Israel think about what they'd done and where they were going and we've got some leverage too as we speak to people and tell them about the Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks for listening, look out for the music and the prayers that I also will send to you. Thank you.